so after my Doc Hollywood Part 2 video, I got a few inquiries about this little skiving machine. Um, it appeared on screen for about uh, five seconds. If you blinked, you missed it. Someone asked if it was antique. No, uh, this is new manufacturer. You can pick one of these up off Amazon for as cheap as 65 bucks. Um, I did not get this one from Amazon. I got this from, from Tandy, obviously. Um, Tandy brands this as the Tandy Pro. Let me see here. The Tandy Pro skiving machine. Um, but what they all are is clones of a Sharfix Skyver made by the German company Schmidt. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, the original machine from Germany is painted green and it cost about 350 bucks. And these clones do not cost that much. So, uh, my honest opinion on this machine is that it works well for what uh, I use it for. It did not work well right out of the box. Uh, and there was some stuff that I had to fix to get this to work properly. Uh, there was some slop in the mechanism uh, that made it really almost impossible to use. And I had to fix that. And actually to fix that is relatively simple. Uh, it doesn't take too much time or, or money to do. And I'm gonna show you how I did that at the end of the video. So if you wanna go ahead and skip forward to that, uh, go ahead, I won't get my feelings hurt. I'm going to do some demo cuts on it just to show you what I use this for. Um, but then I'm going to take it all apart to bring it back to the state it was when I first pulled it out of the box. Um, and then show you what I had to do to, to tweak it to get this to work properly. Okay, so a quick rundown of how to use this. You have a lever back here that lowers and raises the blade. That's attached to this wheel that adjusts your depth for different thicknesses of leather. And this wheel here actually adjusts your angle and you can go from flat all the way to a fairly steep angle and then you have an edge guide here as with any cutting tool is you want to make sure that your blade is sharp and this blade has been used quite a bit so I'm going to go ahead and change that out so I can start this with a fresh cutting edge Pull that out. Uh, so your blades are double-sided, so when one side gets worn out, you can just flip it around. Uh, the blades are relatively cheap, I believe. I have not had to buy a new set, but if you want to be more frugal, uh, it looks like it would be easy to just hone that against a, a stone or a diamond edge um, if you wanted to be cheap about it. But I'm going to use a brand new blade. Just drop that in there. And get a new cutting edge. And you can get a sky up like that. And if it's not exactly perfect, you can always go back and just make some adjustments there. Or let's say, you know, I need a little bit more off. I'm going to drop down the thickness a little bit. And then up there again. Like that. And you can see that gives you a fairly consistent uh, skive on your leather. Especially on longer pieces like this. Okay, so here's like a piece of 9 to 10 ounce veg tan scrap. Um, let's call this a, a gusset that you need to skive down. Uh, you can lower and raise the blade with this little handle here, but I found that you don't really need to do that. You can just take it and shove it in there. I've already got my angle set. I'm going to try to keep my the pull consistent on this side, not going up or down, just kind of flat. And I'm going to use my thumb here against this edge guide to keep this side down as it rolls up and over that roller. And I have found my success kind of depends on how...
consistently I can keep the edge of the leather up against that edge guide. So, there's my scythe. There's the unscythed edge. There's the scythe edge. And it's pretty consistent. And I will say that that takes... It, it takes some practice. This isn't a machine that you're just going to be able to throw on there and just start um, scabbing away and get, getting perfect um, cuts. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice just to kind of get the edge consistent like this because there's a tendency for either as you kind of bring it through here to either kind of go out or in. Um, if you go in too much the blade, depending on how you have this set, the blade could actually literally cut into the leather um, and you'll have uh, basically a cutout on that sky side. But if you ever go through and see that there's a little bit of inconsistency, that's no big deal because all you have to do is kind of run it through again. See, let me lower it down a little bit more. See how close we can get it to the edge. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so I took off a whole layer there. So. See, yeah. This particular leather I'm using here isn't isn't a problem, but like let's say you have a particularly kind of a dry, tough piece of veg tan that you're trying to do this on. I found that you can have a little bit more success with just taking some yeast for oil and just kind of pre-lubing. And that'll help that blade kind of glide through that leather a little bit better. Uh, let's see. All right. So let's do it again. Again, you can raise and lower that, but I generally don't. I just take it and put it in. And again, I am pulling, trying to keep it level on this side, or if anything, maybe a little bit down and I am putting my thumb up against this edge guide and again I'm watching the leather as it feeds through and trying to keep the edge right up against that guide edge I cut that pretty thin um, but it takes some practice with the machine to get to get it consistent like that uh, let's run through a couple more little pieces here real quick this works a lot better with a fresh blade. And if you find any parts where maybe you backed out a little too far, you can just go back and there we go. Um, you have to have something to hold on to on this side and I usually end up with a, just a small piece here that I wasn't able to fit through the machine sometimes I can take it and instead of pulling it I'll push it through um, you need to be careful when doing that 
yeah see if you push it through you'll get a cut like that that's why I have a piece that I'm holding on to on this side and I'll run it through side where I'm holding it I uh, usually just take my knife and just finish that out uh let's see uh some thinner leather So the machine comes with extra rollers of different widths. I'm going to remove this general purpose one out and I'm going to replace it with, uh, let's see, I'm going to replace it with this one. Just like that. And they just rest on top there. So one of the things I make are money belts and that's essentially where you take a thin piece of leather like this and fold it in half put a stitch up along the top and then what you end up with is a belt made out of a leather tube that you can use to store stuff in and if you've seen me make these in my previous videos you've seen what I normally do is I'll lay a straight edge and use my groove cutter and make several passes on I could also use a skyver like this but this machine makes this much easier to do so uh, I've got this set flat with no angle. I've got the smaller roller in and if you notice this roller is lined up with this bolt so that's going to be my target essentially. So I've got my line cut here. I'm going to drop this down and pull and just try to keep it lined up with that bolt. And so what I end up with is a nice channel cut into my leather that I can use to fold and make my money belts with. Or on a leather wallet, a knife sheath, bags, anything where you need to, to fold the leather, kind of at an extreme like that. Um, this just makes it a lot easier. So a trick that I just discovered while filming this video, um, you know how you have a problem with you got this little part here that you have to grab a hold onto when you're skiving. So you get that done and you have this little excess left. You could, if you can get it set up the same, reverse the angle like so. Bring your edge guide out that way. And now, you can pull it through the opposite way. Now getting that edge set the same, it's just a matter of matching it up with your previous cut. And then you can finish that out. So, uh, just a little tip there. And I'm actually glad that I just figured that out. Also, since all the force on this machine is to the side, it's going to twist on the table. I don't care how 
tight you torque down this mounting screw, it's just gonna do it. So what I did is I just found a piece of scrap wood and I epoxied it to the tabletop at a right angle. And that sits up flush against this edge here. So now that it's actually on there, it won't twist. Okay, so as mentioned, when I first got this, it had some issues, uh, and the main issue was this. There's a lot of slop in this linkage up here. I guess at the factory these things are made at, they are cranking these things out as fast as possible when QC gets kind of sidelined. Uh, presumably, the, the German one, I'm assuming, wouldn't have this issue. Why would it? It's German, right? So, uh, the problem is this... These posts here are a little bit loose. These pivots here are a little bit loose. There's a little bit of play in this wheel here and on down the line. And the problem is it's not a lot individually, but once you add all these up, that equals a lot of play down here. If it's waving around like that, you're gonna get an, you're gonna get an inconsistent cut. Um, this is just the worst place to have uh, some tolerance problems. But that's what you have. So how did I fix it? Well, let me show you how I did that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fix the play in that post here, this interface. Um, I gotta drift out this little pin. And whenever I'm dealing with little tiny stuff like this, I'll take a magnet and set it close by and I'm going to just grab a couple of small screwdrivers and there it goes it's off I can pull that out this up and you can see it's like a loose tooth and the problem is is that it's not sitting tight in its hole and if it was flush down to the bottom actually up against this top surface it wouldn't be a problem and if you could turn it tighter Now it's solid. There's actually a special tool, a pair of pliers, that you can use for this. But I'm just doing it the cheater way. Okay. Now the problem on this side is to tighten this down. See, I can get it tight there where it's solid, then the hole isn't facing the right way. So in order to get this to sit tight, I went and found some small washers. And just played with them. until I found a combination that would make this seat properly. There you go. Add that little... It's a little um, lock washer, a little spring washer. And that worked just fine. You might end up having to take some sandpaper on a flat surface and grind some really small uh, washers down to get it to the point where it sits flush up against this bottom surface and stays tight and is pointing the correct way. Okay, so next we have the issue of this pivot here. And it's on both sides. Again, it doesn't seem like a lot. That pivot is just a little too loose in there. But a technique that I learned years and years ago in metal shop. 
when you need to shim something by just a little bit is use aluminum foil. Wrap it up a couple times. Before I do that, I'm going to fix the play. There's a little bit of play on here. You could use some Loctite on here. But I'm going to use Teflon tape. You can find this in the plumbing department of any hardware store. And I'm just going to wrap those threads. That. inward I'm going to take my pin wrapped in aluminum foil at this point it's kind of a tight fit and peel off the rest just one And two. So there you go. Now there's very little play up here and it will make a consistent cut. Uh, hopefully that helps anyone who's thinking about buying it or maybe you already bought it or bought it and was having issues with it. Um, if you got any questions, just uh, drop them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Thanks a lot, guys.